Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, there's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There are many places that we could have been tonight, but we just thank God that he brought us to his house. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalms 150, it reads, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty ferment. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence and greatness. Praise him with the sounds of the tambourine. Praise him with the lute in the heart. Praise him with the tambourine and tremble of dance. Praise him with string instruments. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand praise. Give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Let us, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you in this very hour, Father God. We come to you, Lord God, not complaining, not murmuring, but we come just to say thank you. Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for showing us thy way. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to allow the rain to rain down on us this evening. We ask that you touch your servant, the servant in which you have given your message to give unto your people. We ask, Father God, that he delivers your word with clarity. Let it be easy, Father God, unto him. And let your Holy Spirit reign on this evening. We thank you, we praise you, and we lift your holy name. For we realize without you, Father God, we are nothing. And we ask, Lord, as we stand before you on this night, that you forgive us of all thy sins, any sins we may have committed towards thee or any of our brothers or sisters, we ask that you forgive us. We thank you and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. At this time, we will have our devotion. You may be seated. We will have our devotion by our deacons. Amen. 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 Glory. Thank you. 
justified by Facebook even you shouldn't have aired according to the hope of eternal life. I just read Titus chapter 3 verses 3 through 7. You may be seated. Good evening church. Welcome to our second night of Great Revival. Let us prepare this day to go before the throne of grace and mercy, and I ask that you praise and pray. Let us pray. Good evening, Father. We come this day before thy throne of grace and mercy as humble as we know how. Yes. We ask that you come in and sit up with us just a little while. Yes. First, Father, we want to say thank you for bringing us to the appointed place at the appointed time. We come to praise and uplift your just and holy name. We ask that you come in, Father. Lift us each, every one of us up. Point us in the right direction you want us to go. Doing the things you want done. Saying what you want saying. However you want to say it, Father. We ask your blessing tonight. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come in and enlighten us. Lift us up, Father. Touch us in a mighty way this day. For we come to praise your holy and just name. We ask that you start at our pulpit. Press the gentleman that's going to bring us your holy word tonight, Father. Lift him up, him and his family, his friends, all of those that preach and teach your just and holy word, Father. Touch them all in a mighty way. Touch our choir that's going to sing songs of Zion tonight, Father. Touch our ushers that sat at the door. Touch all of us, Father. For we came to praise your just and holy name. For this is one day that we came to hook up the battery to get revived, Father. Touch us all. We all know we need it. Some of us don't admit it, Father. Lift us up where we need love. Give us strength where we're weak, Father. For we need you in our life in a mighty way. We come humbly before you, Father, telling others of your goodness this day. We thank you, we praise you, and we serve you. Because we all realize one day, one day we're going to have to leave this great world. We know that you have prepared a holy, heavenly kingdom for your worshipers. We prepare ourselves for that day because we know one day we want to knock on that door and you say, come on in, my friend. Come on in, my servant. You are well deserving of it. We thank you this day. We praise you this day. We serve you this day. And we do these things this day and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome again to come to our second night of worship. I'm in a good mood tonight just seeing all y'all smiling faces. Piano player, let's do it. <laughs> what are we going to do? Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me, with me. Walk. to bring in that Holy Spirit. 
I tell you, I'm from a little small church down in Alabama. I was born and raised down there from a little boy. And I used to see the old folks get up and tell about the goodness of the Lord in their lives. So tonight, we're going to get an opportunity to tell about the goodness of the Lord in our life. Would there be one to come forth tonight? Stand there. Tell us all about the goodness of the Lord in your life. Would there be one? Tell about his goodness this day. I know he's been good in somebody's life. I know you're just sitting there. I want to tell somebody something. Go ahead, my sister. Ain't nothing like telling about the goodness of Jesus. But there'll be another. I know he's been good in your life. You're still here. I know you just can't wait to tell about his goodness in your life. Well, we all have something to be grateful for. We all have something to thank the Lord for. So I'm going to thank the Lord first for saving me, keeping me, and never leaving me alone. I was listening to a song this morning, and we are just never alone. Sometimes he was talking last night about the rain, and I was like, you know, sometimes we don't just go through rain, we go through storms. And we go through storms, and we think the weather's bad. And I'm not talking about the physical storm. I'm talking about the daily storms. But we are never alone. And we, need, we hear that voice, that spirit that he left us. And we hear that, and we say, thank you, God. Even though it's rough, it could be an illness we're going through, and it might be an illness we don't even come out of. That storm, but the Lord is still with us. And I thank him for that. I thank for that spirit so I know, I know I'm not alone. 
And one of the physical things I want to thank him for is this man here that he gave me. <laughs> it was actually 52 years ago we met, but it took us two years before we figured out, yeah, this is it. <laughs> so we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary this year. And I want to thank God for that. And I'm thankful and grateful that we can still talk to each other. We can still argue with each other. <laughs> and we could do it, each one of us can do it. God kept us physically well and blessed us to be able to do that. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> Would there be another to tell about the goodness in your life? I know God didn't help you. I know one day you couldn't even see the end.
know, sometimes things get so bad, and you can't see a way to go. Friends tell you one thing. You do something else. But I tell you, when Jesus speaks to us, you got to listen. You got to humble yourself. He done did that to everybody. You might not admit it here tonight. But he's opened doors that I didn't even know doors were there. And he's closed doors that shouldn't have been open for me in the first place. Ain't God good? Would there be another want to stand up and tell about the goodness of the Lord tonight? Lord is with us tonight. He has blessed us in mighty ways. Would there be one to stand up and tell about his goodness in their lives? I know he doesn't touch your lives. He doesn't open doors for you. And we'll open them again. All you got to do is ask. And thank him when he do. Would there be one tonight? It might just be another song on your heart. Praising the Lord as well, you know. Praising him as well. Well, I'll tell you, some
there'll be another. there be another to tell about God's goodness in their lives. I know he's touched everybody in here. I know you're just waiting to jump up. Don't be embarrassed. <laughs> Ain't God good? All the, All the time. There's a little one over there that probably don't know, understand yet how to come up and testify, but I'm going to sit here watching her. And she's been into this service. She's been into the spirit. She's she's got a blessing on her. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, since we ain't got nobody else to talk, I've been humbled by this, and I'll turn it back over to the pulpit. <laughs> Truly, it is good to be a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we will receive a selection a praise on from these dynamic men that are standing behind me. Amen. Oh, 
Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, I ask that you stand with me and join me in our congregational hymn. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. 
the Lord a hand praise hallelujah glory to his name glory to his name he is worthy to be praised I said he is worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah glory to God I want to stay with the program but I would be remiss if I didn't note that when I look out in the audience boy we are some beautiful people my, 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 if you could see what I see, my God, my God, my God, we are some blessed people. Hallelujah. At this time, amen, we ask that you prepare your hearts and your mind, amen, for offering. We ask that the ushers please come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Please stand. Yes. Yes, Lord.
Let's go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless those that gave, and we ask that you bless those who wanted to give but had not. We thank you and we praise you, Father God, for this offering. All things come of thee, O Lord, and all of thy own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O time we will have the introduction of the speaker by Apostle Anthony Bowie. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Well, come on, don't stop those hand claps just yet. Amen. Where there is anticipation, and expectation, we are guaranteed for elevation. How many are ready to go even higher on tonight? Oh, come on, give God some praise in advance for what the Lord is getting ready to do in this place. Hallelujah. As we stated on last evening, John 9 and verse 21, amen, he is of age. God has gifted him and equipped him to be able to speak for himself. We won't talk about when he was a child because there's a whole lot of elements and layers to that. But I will witness that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. 
but these are the rewards that doing what the Bible says yields. And tonight, amen, he is divinely appointed, highly anointed, none other than Minister Anthony Isaiah Bowie, the husband of one wife, the soon to be father of one child, known as Chloe Chanel Bowie. I knew I'd get a smile out of him off of that. And he is here tonight to share the good news of Jesus Christ with us. Let us not pull on him, but let us push him into the purpose that God has predestined for tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, after the choir has ministered, two selections, next voice by way of preaching will be Minister Isaiah Bowie. To God be the glory. You may be seated. Come on, come on, choir. Jesus is all, all over me, all over me, all over me. Your head is keeping, keeping Jesus on me, me alive. keeping me alive today, keeping me alive, all, all over me, all over me, all over me. All over me, say it ain't nobody, nobody but Jesus. Somebody turn this mic up. Nobody but Jesus. Say it ain't nobody, nobody but Jesus. And he's keeping, keeping me alive. Jesus is on, all over me. All over me, all over me, and it's keeping, keeping me alive, keeping me it's alive today, keeping me alive, all over me, all over me, all over me, all over me, so there ain't nobody, nobody but Somewhere sleeping in my grave. But it was you, you, Jesus, that made all things stop and be here. And early this morning, he stopped by, he shook my body. Nobody but Jesus. 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 
Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Keep it me alive. While the blood's in my veins, while the blood's running warm in my veins, God's got a way that you can't go over. God's got a way that you can't go over. God's got a way.
said, how many glad that you came in tonight? How many glad that one day when you was lost, you came into the door? How many glad to be in the ark of safety tonight? How many glad to be out of the hands of the enemy tonight? How many can say that Satan is defeated? God is exalted, and you got the victory. Say, preacher, how do I know I got the victory? Because you defeated death because you still here tonight. So that means that you got the victory. You got breath in your body. That means you got the victory. You got air in your lungs. That means you got the victory. The Bible said, now thanks be unto God who has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you got the victory tonight, I don't want you to act cute. I don't want you to act stuck up. I don't want you to act so diddy, but I wanted you to act like you victorious. You can't say that you got the victory and look defeated. Amen. I don't know about nobody else, but I came for church tonight. I didn't come for formal fashion. I didn't come to look at you. I don't care if you came to look at me, but I came for a move of God tonight. You say, preacher, why are you so excited? I looked in the crowd, and not only is nobody laying right here, but nobody not in a wheelchair tonight. Everybody except for the tiniest baby can walk in this room tonight. How many grateful you didn't get wheeled in here? You didn't get pushed in here, but you walked in by your own might? Because if it had not been the Lord, come on. How many can say, I deserve to die? but he let me live. I was marked for death, but he gave me life. I was in my mess, but he gave me mercy. Come on, how great is our God. Amen. We're so grateful to be here tonight. I tell you, it's another day that the Lord has kept us, there which we are indeed glad. All of my father's children, it's a blessing to greet you in the matchless, marvelous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that he is Calvary's reigning champion. We know it's at that name that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess, everyone will say that he is indeed the King of kings and Lord of lords. I tell you, it's a blessing to be covered under the blood just one more time. Oh, it's not because of how cute you were. It's not because of how much money was in your bank account. Well, I've been covered by the blood. Thank God. I tell you, I'm just grateful. We give on to whom honor is due. First of all, we don't want to give on to the angel of this house, Pastor Graves and Lady Graves. And to the angel of my house, Apostle Anthony Andre Bowie. Come on, we can do better than that. I tell you, anybody preach like he preached last night, that's worthy of a standing ovation. So let's give God praise for the character of God working through him. And I thank God for this household of faith. I tell you, it's something, man. We got the ushers dressed in all white. Usually it has to be somebody there for the ushers to wear all white. So we thank God for y'all wearing all white on a Thursday night. Y'all look mighty good. I tell you one thing, I said, Lord, I said, they got their white on. Everybody talks about that long white robe we're going to get in heaven. I said, I know I ain't been perfect. God just give me a short one, I'd be all right. But I thank God for them. They got their long white robes on. I tell you, I said, Lord, the old folks say, say, as long as I get a seat in the kingdom, that's all right. I don't care. The Bible said the righteous is scarcely saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? I don't care how I get there. If I get there by the hair of my chinny chin chin, as long as I see Jesus, that's all right with me. How many looking forward to seeing Jesus tonight? Uh, it's good to look at you, and I hope you like looking at me, but I'm ready to see the man. I'm ready to see the man that woke me up this morning. I'm ready to see the man that pays my bills. I'm ready to see the man that puts food on my table. I'm ready to see the man that puts clothes on my back. I tell you, who wouldn't serve a God like this? We thank God for these men of God standing up here. Come on. How many know statistically, statistically, men, and especially us men of color, are not in the house of God on a Thursday night? Y'all don't want to talk to me. But see, these men are not only in the house of God, but they're singing not to you, but to God. 
and they're singing for God. And I tell you, I didn't know if Doc McKenzie was back there or what. When they got hyped up and started singing, I said, oh, man, Doc done came down tonight. I feel special. But I thank God for you all. And let's give God a hand clap of praise for these musicians. Come on, y'all can do better than that. See, what many don't realize, music is a great enhancement of the word of God. See, I can come in here and preach out loud to you tonight, but I'm the meat, but they're the seasoning. How many know that? See, I'm the meat, but that's the salt and that's the pepper. And if you ain't got no salt and pepper, the meat is good to make your belly full, but you might not want to eat that much of it. So we thank God for their here being tonight. We're grateful to have them. And I don't want to be before you very long, but before I go, I just want to talk to you about my beautiful wife. She pressed her way here. And she didn't come here with just regular clothes on, but she came here with a whole baby in her. And the baby is like some of y'all blessings. That baby is knocking at the door. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. That baby is like your blessing. Some of y'all blessing is knocking at your door. See, the Bible says that when a woman is in travail, when a woman has a baby that's on the way, she has sorrow for her hours come. But after that pain, come on, after that burden, there is joy that a child has been born into the world. I don't know what you're going through, but the blessing is going to be worth it. I don't know what you've been dealing with in your body, but the blessing is going to be worth it. I don't know what you've been dealing with on your job, but the blessing is going to be worth it. I don't know what's been going on in your house, but tell somebody, say neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. And we're going to get straight into the word tonight. I just thank God for Lottie, Dottie, everybody, but I don't want to get in trouble tonight. I got a lot of special folk here tonight, but one person that's in this room tonight, I would be remiss without thanking God for them. I don't know her exact title, but I want to give God praise for a lady that in a dark time of my life, she prayed me through a lot of stuff. She sat there and heard me complain. She heard me talk. She listened to me. I called this lady several times, a lot of times, for help, for, help, for guidance, for spiritual insight. And I want to give God praise for what I say, prophetess Brenda Green. That woman is a mighty prayer warrior. And for somebody that mighty to think not strange, count it not robbery, to come out to hear what God says through this little tiny vessel, I'm so honored tonight and humbled tonight to have her in here. This woman is a dynamic woman of God, and we just thank God for her. And if I omitted anyone, I'm so sorry, but I pray that whatever God has to say to you tonight will make up for what my head could not do. Is that all right? Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead into the word tonight. Is it the custom of the house to stand to be seated, sir? All right, the word of God has stood for you so many times, you might not mind standing up for the word of God. And the Bible is going to give us this intelligence from the book of Romans, chapter 12, two verses of scripture, very familiar passage of text, verses 1 through 2. I'm not going to be before you very long if the Lord doesn't have me to, but if he does, just tip on out. Just don't disrespect, just don't distract or disrespect the ones that want to get the word tonight. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 3, how can two walk together except they agree? So I want to have a question and answer session. Did you come for a word of God tonight? Can we agree? Okay. Are you up for whatever God is up to tonight? Can we agree? So if I stay up here all night long, if God is moving, are you going to sit here and get what God has for you? All right, I thought so. Let's get to it. Hey, Amen. Now, if you walk out, I won't be mad at you. It's all right. I just pray you get home safe because it's a good thing to be covered by a benediction. It's a good thing to be covered. See, sometimes in life we leave some things prematurely and we don't get the full potential what God had to say to us. Come on. God is saying tonight, before you leave, you need to sit a little while. Come on. Many of us want to stand up all the time, but God is saying, sit down and get what I got for you. Many times we want to leave prematurely because it's not pleasurable at the moment. But if you wait just a little while longer, come on. The old folks say, if I could just hold out till tomorrow, come on. If I can just keep the faith through the night, if I can just hold out till tomorrow, everything will be all right. Amen. All right, we're going to get into the Word of God. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. The Bible is going to give us this intelligence. If you're there, say, uh-huh. If you're not, say, wait on me. I ain't waiting on nobody. Let's go. 
Verse 1 said, I beseech you, I beg you, I'm asking you nicely, but I want you to do this urgently as soon as you can. I want you to do this for a specific purpose. I want you to hurry up and get in line so God can get what he has for you. It said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, not just men, women, children, boys, and girls, everyone that can hear the voice of God by the mercies of God. Mercy is when God doesn't let some things happen to you that should happen to you, that you present your bodies, the bodies that I put air in, the bodies that I put activity in, you of your limbs in your body is a living sacrifice no, not, no, 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 nobody, nobody is dead in this house tonight so we have a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world come on we're going somewhere but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. You can take your seat tonight. The grass withers and the flowers do fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Look down your row and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. I don't know how you feel about it. But the word for tonight is... The undeniable, the undeniable transformation. transformation. Uh, that's the wrong neighbor. Find you one more neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. The word for tonight is the, for tonight the undeniable, undeniable transformation. transformation. Amen. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, saints and sinners alike, when we read this passage of scripture, the word beseech, as I forementioned, means to urge. Yes. See, the problem in the kingdom of God tonight is that we have lost our urgency. We have people who don't take the matters of God seriously anymore. We have people who have lost their thrill and their zeal for the kingdom. Come on. We have lost the thought of let's win souls. We have lost the thought of let's go hit the hedges and the highways and compel men to come to the church house. Instead, we ride by. We don't speak to folk. We keep our nose up at folk. But how many know sometimes the same folk that you look down at will look up their nose at you? How many know you can be up today and down tomorrow. Come on. You can be healthy today and sick tomorrow. Come on. You can be rich today and poor tomorrow. My daddy always told me when I was young, he said, son, you should never think more highly of yourself. He said, I don't care if you're Bill Gates. I don't care if you're Elon Musk. He said, you can be a millionaire and get a $10 million problem. Come on. There are some things that your money can't buy. There are some checks that your money can't get you out of. Money said, the Bible said money is the answer to all things, but there are some things you're going to have to get on your knees. You're going to have to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If you draw your face from me, tell me where shall I go? See, and he said, be not conformed to this world. And we're going to work this text for a little while. So I'm going to go back and forth. So don't get it twisted. If I don't satisfy the traditionalists, just bear with me for a little while. I'm just not educated. I'm not, like the Bible says, I'm not haughty. I'm not lofty. But I just got what God has to give it to me. So it said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, to be renewed simply means to resume. See, it's just like that good show on TV. For example, let's take it down here. You sitting at your house watching TV. Let me tell you how life can work. You sitting at your house watching TV, right? The movie's getting real good, but you got to press pause. When you press pause, you got to answer a phone call. How many know that life can change in the second of a phone call? Come on. Life can change just like that. See, you can get one phone call that can change the very dynamics of your life. You can be getting one text message, one letter in the mail, one email that 
can change everything about how you've been living every day. See, it says to be renewed means to resume. See, God is saying simply in this small text that we got to get back to doing some things that we were doing. Come on. We got a lot of old folk that say church ain't what it used to be. They say people don't praise God. They say, Zion, what's the matter now? The problem is that we're not doing what we once did. Oh, you say church ain't the same no more. You say preaching ain't the same no more. You say that everything has changed. Well, sometimes it's because we have changed. Come on. Because one thing I love about the word of God, the word of God does not change for you. It does not change for me. It don't matter if I'm a doctor. It don't matter if I'm a PhD. It don't matter if I'm a lawyer in the courtroom. How many know the word don't change for nobody? See, we got plenty of folk today. They want to change the word as a tailored suit. See, the word is a baggy suit. The word don't always look good on you. The word don't always feel good on you. But we want to tailor the word. We want to cut this out to fit our size. See, we want to cut out adultery when we're doing it. Come on. We want to cut out lying when we're lying. We want to cut out cheating when we're cheating. We want to cut out homosexuality when your child is homosexual. But see, the thing that I love about the word is fair. One thing I love is that in the midst of an unfair economy, come on, in the midst of an economy where the fortunate are destined for success and the unfortunate are doomed to fail, the word of God is for everybody. Come on. For the Bible said, I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all come into repentance. How many know that if you can repent, if you can turn, as the scripture said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek Seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. Then what I hear from heaven, I'll forgive your sins and heal your lambs. How many know that if you can be renewed, you can get the new? I said if you can be renewed, you can get the new. Come on. If you can get lying, you can get the miracles. Come on. If you can get in line, you can get the blessings. Some of y'all been hearing prophets preach for years, telling you you're going to get this, you're going to get that, but you ain't got in line. Come on. Y'all don't like me tonight. But how many know God is saying to somebody in this room tonight, he's saying the blessing is still good. Come on. The promise is still good. I'm just waiting on you. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Oh neighbor. I don't know what the Lord spoke to you. I don't know what he said over your life. But God said to tell you tonight, that the promise is still good. Now, uh, y'all don't want to shout. That's enough to shout about. The promise is still good. Some of y'all are, are going to be business owners. The devil been telling you that it ain't going to happen. How do I know? Because he been telling me. But I know tonight that the promise is still good. I don't have to come in here from Detroit, Michigan, from California, from Houston, Texas, bobbing my head telling you that it's about to happen. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. But I know what the Lord said tonight. Now, it said, be not conformed to this world. See, one thing that the church has forgotten tonight is that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. See, the reason we can't get folk in church is because we look just like them. See, I'm not going to get you into my house when you got a house that looks just like mine. See, the problem with church, I'm about to hurt some folk's feelings. The problem with church is that it's operated just like the hood. You got the OG at the top. He ain't doing no work. But you got the street man out there. They selling the dimes and nickels. So you got the pastors that ain't working in the vineyard of God, but they collecting every Sunday. 
You got the dope boys that's out there. They selling their dope. They pushing that rock. They going out there putting their name out there in the streets. They scamming on Facebook and social media. But they putting the risk up and they giving the preacher the reward. See, we got people that's hitting the hedges. We got people that's hitting the highways. We got people that's going out there bringing them to you just for you to collect the offering. See, many times we don't care about souls no more. We've lost our zeal for people's spirit. We don't care about what God is saying to folk. We don't care about no change. All we care about is the change that's in our pocket. But I don't know about nobody else. But if I'm, I made up in my mind tonight, I don't need fortune. I don't need fame. I don't need riches. I just want to be anointed. See, because I don't need the anointing that pays the bills. I need the anointing that destroys the yoke. Come on. Because the Bible said, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory in Christ Jesus. I mean, you know, we serve a rich God. We don't serve a broke God. We serve a rich God. We don't serve a mediocre God. We serve an extraordinary God. We don't serve a God of ordinary. We serve a magnificent God. Now, the scripture said, the scripture said, I beseech you, I'm begging you. The Bible said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. See, the people have twisted that scripture to believe that it's only for the unbeliever. You preaching that to the boys on the block, God knocking at your door. God been trying to talk to you for a long time. Baby, you know it's time for you to come on in. For what? And you doing the same thing he doing. You saying, God, God knocking on your door, baby. God been knocking on your door telling you to stop gossiping at 2 in the morning. I used to wonder when I was little, I said, why are the saints so sleepy in Sunday school and they retired? It's because they've been talking about us all night. I'm wondering why are they so sleepy? They ain't worked in 10 years. Because they talked about my daddy all night long. <laughs> you going tomorrow? <laughs> I don't want to, but I guess I will. <laughs> you say, <laughs> But I ain't putting no money in the offering. I ain't gonna give him nothing. His house big enough already. And that's why y'all's ain't never gonna grow. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, when you give, it shall be given. Let me tell you how it works. It says, press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Shall men give unto you? Oh, I said to you. See, some of y'all been getting preached around. See, the fact of the matter is, the one, one way to gauge how God is going to bless some folk is how do you react when God is blessing everybody in your circle but you? Oh, he blessed that brother right there. He got him a new car. He got him a new house. But Lord, what about me? God is saying, I want to see how do you react when I bless those around you? Because when I bless you, I want to know how you going to act. See, many times people are wondering, God, why are you skipping me? But I remember when the Jesus we serve went to a wedding one night and he turned water into wine. They got better and happier than they had ever been before. But at that moment, when they thought it was over, oh, some of y'all been thinking your life is over. I don't care what the doctor said to you tonight. I don't care what they spoke over your life. Tell somebody it ain't over till God says it's over. But when they thought the party was over, he said, hold up. He said, I saved the best for last. God is saying tonight, I've saved the best for last. He said, you've been looked over. You've been overlooked. You've been stepped on. You've been stepped over. But God said, you are not forgotten. 
He said, God said tonight to let somebody in this room know I'm saving the best for last. Oh, I know they got a Mercedes, but you're going to ride a Range Rover. I know they got a Cadillac, but you're going to get an Audi. I know they got a Toyota, but you're going to get a Honda. God has said, I'm saving the best for last. Now, now, it said, be ye transformed. And that's the theme for our text tonight. The problem in church is that we're into a cycle that's to none effect. See, anything that we know about a cycle means that when you go around, it's like a filter. It's like dialysis. When you go around a cycle, when you put your clothes on the cycle in the washing machine, it's to relieve from any impurities that's inside. See, the problem with church, the church was a washing machine. We're walking in dirty and walking out dirty. See, we're getting in the machine. We're getting tossed and turned. Huh? Ain't the Lord all right, huh? Ain't the Lord all right, huh? Aye, aye, huh? The preacher biting on the microphone and you don't even know what he said. Preacher chewing on that microphone like Willie Neal Johnson and you don't even know what he's talking about. That's why we're getting in the machine, but we're not getting rinsed. Y'all didn't hear that. We're getting in the machine, but we're not getting rinsed. We're coming into a repair the cycle, in the doors one day, out the doors the next, in the doors one day, out the doors the next. But when are we going to be washed? It said, we have a generation that's pure in their own eyes, but yet have not been washed from their filth. And the reason many times that they haven't been washed from their filth is because we're pacifying them because of their gifts. See, we're pacifying folk because they can sing. We're pacifying folk because they can preach. We know that the gift and callings of God are without repentance, but it comes a time in our life that we need to humble ourselves, say, God, I need you to work on me. I've been preaching to everybody else. I've been singing to everybody else, but God, I need you to turn me around. Come on. It's a sad thing that the old folk used to say, it's a shame for you to go to hell through the church, but most of us now are going to hell through the pool pit. See, it ain't just the folk in the pews, but God said we're going to have a good revival in hell. It's going to be some dogmatic, some show enough anointed preachers downstairs. I know everybody talking about we're going up yonder to some going up yonder, or some of us going down yonder. I'm going up down yonder if I don't get right. See, many of us have confused our gift with salvation. We have confused that we can amuse the crowd, we can inspire the crowd. But the Bible I read said that, what does it profit me if I preach to others and I myself be a castaway? Some of us going to get up there, like the scripture said, it's going to say, many of us get up there and say, Lord, I cast out demons of your name. I preach to your name. I prophesy to your name. But it's going to say, depart from me. I knew you not. Ain't that a, same, a sad thing when you done been on all these flyers? You done charged all these honorariums? You done ate off of all these people's food stamp cards. These members done gave you money that they didn't even have. And they sitting up there eating from milk and honey. They sitting up there eating from the trees that got leaves on it for the healing of the nation. And you saying, like the old man, like the rich man said, can you send that old beggar Lazarus that he may dip his finger in some water to cool my tongue, for I am in torment. But the sad thing is, we don't even realize that the tank is on E. 
God is allowing us to ride on fumes. God said, should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How many know God is a gentleman? God don't force himself on you. He don't make you do nothing that you don't want to do. But he said, I beseech you. He said, I'm asking you nicely. Come on back, man. I still love you. I'm married to you. I care about you. But why you can't just come on back? The Bible said, my commandments are not grievous. So I ain't asking you to do nothing hard. Just serve me. I ain't asking you to do nothing hard. Just love me. Just treat your neighbor right. Just tell the truth. Just pay your tithes. Just act like a child of God. I ain't forgot the boy on the corner. Now this boy on the corner is now confused. He doubts who God is because of the servants that he sees. How many know that some of us are the only Jesus that some people are going to see? See, God is saying to some of us tonight, look in the mirror. He's saying to us tonight, when you look in the mirror, do you want to serve you? Think about it. Would you serve who you see? We're supposed to be like Jesus. Would you serve who you see? See, many times in church, we have been caught up into a thing of villainizing those outside of our own. See, we villainize those who we don't understand. See, you villainize that girl that walks up the block, but you don't know who in the church raped her. You villainize that boy that got a little Swiss in his walk, but you don't know when your pastor was rubbing his legs. You villainize that boy that sell dope, but you don't villainize that pastor that's stealing hope. I didn't say selling it, I said stealing it. He lying on God, saying God said this. God said in two days. God ain't said nothing. You just want the people to give you an offering. One of the major turnoffs in the kingdom to me is that you can preach your heart out. You can sit there and preach your guts out. And everybody's excited. And then the musician come playing softly. There's a musician, play, play soft one for me, bro. Watch this. Now at this time, if you've been touched by the word of God, ministry is not cheap. We would love for you to sow into our ministry. This suit is a designer by Stephen Lamb. It was very expensive. Gas is $3 a gallon. So if you believe in what you heard, if you believe that God can do what I said he's going to do, can I get a $500 line? If you have $500 hope, please come to the front. Text your mother, text your sister, text your brother. Tell the cash app you. You don't want to miss this move. Boy, bye. But how many know when you've been transformed, you realize that the anointing ain't got no price ticket on it? You realize that the anointing ain't something that you need to pay a thousand dollars for? But how many know the Bible says, ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be open. God is saying the blessing is there, I just wait on your knock. He's saying the blessing is in the room, I just want to hear from you. He said, I got the miracle, I just need you to ask for it. God is saying it's yours for the asking tonight. Now, Lord, I love the Lord, y'all. Now, it said, by the mercies, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. One thing I love about God is that he doesn't treat me as my sins deserve. 
See, I don't know about nobody else, but I appreciate a merciful God. See, you say, preacher, what is mercy? Mercy is when he don't give me what I do deserve. See, mercy is when he knows that I'm not right, but he knows I have potential. See, he knows that I haven't always done good, but he's still being good. He knows that I forget about him every week but he ain't never forgot about me. I want to put in perspective tonight, imagine if the role switched. Think about it like this, I always said this, I love dogs. So think about it like this, how you treat your dog is a lot similar to probably how you treat God. Think about it like this, think about it. Many times with a dog, a dog is confined to a chain or in a fence. So many times when it's confined, it's easy to forget about it. So sometimes people forget to feed their dogs. They forget to clean up after them. See, it's just like that with your spiritual walk. The fact that God is not in your face all the time, we have a tendency to forget about him. See, because he's not always speaking in your audible ear, because he's not always texting your natural phone, we have a tendency to forget that God is still omnipresent. Amen. See, many times we forget that he's the one that puts air in our body. Come on. We forget that if he don't tell our heart to beat, we don't live. We forget that if he don't tell our legs to walk, we don't move. We forget that if he don't put the movement in our hands, we don't go nowhere. And we confuse our money with God. But the Bible says, I've given you the power to get wealth. How many know if God don't breathe on us every morning? Come on. The scripture says, his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. See, many times we forget the faithfulness of God. We forget that God is with us day in and day out. How many know we think we busy? That man is keeping all of us living. He got many people on the face of the earth that he keeping ticking, and most of us don't even deserve it. But just imagine the roles being switched. God and you, let's say, let's swap out for the day. See, many times, that's how some of the preachers need to do to these lay members. You got a problem with everything that the preacher say. You act like you don't want to hear him no more. Well, let's switch. You preach this Sunday. Y'all, how many of y'all ever watched Daddy's Little Girls? Raise your hand. You remember she came and she said, Monty, feeding them girls ain't easy, huh? It ain't that easy, is it? It's just like that with preaching. See, some of y'all don't even want to come hear a sermon because you got a headache. I've been lifting dead bodies all day. I got a headache too. But I'm here. Some of y'all say, I don't want to come to church because they be in there too long. So what if God said, I'm going to disown them because they cry too long? I'm going to disown them because it take them too long to get right. I'm going to disown them because they've been sinning too long. I didn't think you wanted to switch. Now, it said, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. I thought about it like this. God gives us activity of our limbs. He gives us air of our lungs. He gives us everything that we need. But we don't want to give him our attention. We don't want to give him our time, our talents, our giftings. Because it's just like we confuse our potential with our purpose. It's just like this right here. I, I'm an embalmer. God, glory be to God. And when you inject fluids into a body, I'm going to break something down for you. When you inject fluids into a body, there's a thing called potential pressure, actual pressure, and differential pressure. 
When you have the injection going, we have a machine and the button says rate of flow. That is our potential pressure, which is at 25 PSI. So that means pounds per second of pressure that it can push into your body. But see, the problem is when it enters into the vascular system, because of the arterial system being disrupted by calcium and fat buildup, or we got people that ain't taking care of their bodies, we got people that's poisoning the system that God gave them, it comes into a thing called differential pressure. Let me explain what differential pressure does. Now that we have differential pressure, I have the potential to put all that pressure in you and preserve you, but your own body is denying the potential. See, your own body, your diet, your issues are keeping you from being preserved. See, God has as much potential as you allow him to give you. God has stored up energy ready to give it to you. But if you keep adding mess into your life, you create differential pressure and stop the flow of your blessings. I'm losing y'all now. What time is it? Anybody know what time it is? Put your phone up. Now, one thing I love about the scripture, it said, present your body as a living sacrifice. That didn't mean to die. See, that shows just how good God is. He's saying, the Bible says, what greater love has a man showed than he laid down his life for his friend? God is saying, I don't even want you to die. I just want you to live and live right. He said, I don't want you to go nowhere. He said, I'm going to let you survive. He said, I'm not going to let nothing happen to you. I just want you to be my vessel. He said, I just want you to be a vessel fit for the master's use. He said, I just want you to walk how I would have for you to walk. Come on. He said, I just want you to talk how I would have for you to talk. He said, I just want you to live how I would have for you to live. So tonight, I just want to, before I go, I just want to put on your mind that as a kingdom, it's time for renewal. It's time out for leaving how we walked in. It's time out for coming in for one reason, and the reason is not to hear from God. It's time out for walking in without potential. Come on. You're walking in habitually, but you're not walking in purposely. Church is not a place for habit. It's not a place for tradition. It's not a place for grandma's sayings. It's not a place for granddaddy's sayings, but it's a place to hear from the Lord. See, many times we confuse tradition and religion with God. See, God never said, I care if you Baptist. He never said, I care if you Methodist. He never said, I care if you Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Lutheran, Church of Latter-day Saints, Seven-day Adventists. He said, I just want you to be one body. See, the church is not a building, but it's the people that live to get to the building that's not made by man's hands and eternal in the heavens. See, in the Bible, church was not walls. Church was saints. See, we got big churches, but not enough saints. And a saint is not just a person is in attendance. But like the old folks say, I call an ace an ace on a spade a spade. A saint is a saint wherever you go. See, a saint is a saint in Walmart. A saint is a saint in that long Chick-fil-A line. 
a saint is a saint when you've been sitting at Cheddar's for three hours and they ain't called your table number yet? A saint is a saint when the gas is high as I don't know what? A saint is a saint when you've been at work all night long and your relief ain't showed up and you ain't getting paid overtime. And God is saying to some of us tonight, are you still saved in the midst of trouble? The Bible says if we faint at the day of adversity, our strength is small. The true litmus test of salvation is how do we act in the midst of trouble? Do we call on God or do we call on people that can't do us no good? See, it's just like Joseph in the Bible. Joseph was a dreamer. But one thing Joseph messed up on, instead of asking God to discern his dreams and instruct them on how to get to his dream, he went to the dream killers and told them about his dream. And see, some of us tonight, we're telling too many people our plans. We're telling too many people our business. We're telling too many people what God showed us. But the Bible says that the secret things belong to God and the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children. But the sad thing is we live in a day and time you can't even tell your own kin folks some stuff because they rather block your dream than build your dream. You can't tell the people that you think love you so much. You can't tell the people that you think are your ride or dies because I can almost guarantee you that if the rubber meets the road, if it gets rocky and the wheels begin to shake, you're gonna be in that car right by yourself. Now, the next thing that we realize here, it said that presenting yourself, to present means to come to the forefront and display. A lot of us are potential energy. We're gonna go back to potential energy. We're saying, God, one day, God, one day I'm gonna get it together. God, when you do this for me, <laughs> like Medea said, I'm going by the church. <laughs> but we've been riding by, we've been riding by, and riding by, and God is saying that you've been telling me that God, when you save my husband, me and my husband ain't going to miss a Sunday together. But as soon as your husband gets saved, now y'all watching ESPN together. Because how many know that the devil, he hates potential? So let me tell you how the devil works. The Bible said that the devil is like a roaring lion, going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says Satan desires to sift us out like wheat. Let me tell you how he does. When the devil can't get to you, he begins to work all around you. So now that the husband saved, I'm a working the wife. Now that the child saved, I'm a working the mama. Now that the grandparents saved, I'm a working the parents. Because the devil wants to stop the progress that he sees taking place. Come on. See, the devil don't mind you living. The devil don't mind you existing. Because to live don't mean that you're alive. See, the devil don't mind you going on. The devil don't mind. But like my daddy used to tell me, he said, people don't mind you doing good. They just don't want you to do better than them. Yeah. Yeah. See, and it's just like that with the devil. He don't mind you existing. But don't get saved. See, some of y'all thought that when you gave the preacher your hand and gave God your heart that the trouble was over. But how many know that's when it all broke loose? Uh, you thought that when you gave your life to God, that it was going to be heaven on earth. But Lord Jesus, it got hot in your life. Everything began to shake and fall apart. Everything began to happen. And what happens is the people that you never thought would switch up on you. 
walked off and left you for dead. See, it's the same people that you thought had your best interest, but when they saw the difference in you, I'm already musicians too. I want you to, oh, don't leave me hanging now. So go ahead and start getting right for me, buddy. All right, I need you. <laughs> so, it's the same people that when you begin to get saved, that you thought would never leave, they left. And let me tell you why they left. Because the devil in them didn't feel right being around the God inside of you. See, some of y'all think that it's something you've done. You think that it's because they're jealous. It's not that all the time. Sometimes it is because the Bible says jealousy is cruel as the grave. But sometimes you're not suffering because of who you are. You're suffering because of who you serve. Now, as I go to my seat, I'm reminded of a story. And the story is about a man. I'm going to tell two stories before I go to my seat. We're talking about a transformation. There was this one man in a church. The one at St. Joseph. Don't worry, I ain't going to talk about y'all. <laughs> the man was at the church, and when the man was at the church, they said every Sunday morning, the man walked in, cold in his eyes, hair on his face, hair all over his head, no good clothes on. He sounded like the man that the Williams brothers were talking about, the old wino sitting beside the road, said, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. But the man met a woman. And where this brother used to wear a blue blazer with some green pants, the brother had on a black suit. To tie the match, shoes was shining. And see, it's just like that when you meet Jesus. Come on. When we transform, when you meet the man, come on, somebody. See, people that you got high with going to say, is that you? People that you got drunk with going to say, is that you? Even people that you slept with going to say, that's you? And when it happens, say, yeah, it's me. Come on. Yeah, that's the one that you lied on. Yeah, that's the one that you raped and molested. That's the one that you talked about like I won't go make it. That's the one that you said I'd never amount to anything. That's the one that you told everybody not to fool with. That's the one because God has shifted my environment. Tell somebody, we serve the God of a turnaround. We serve the God that said to Abraham, he said, don't kill it, take another look. Come on. And before you kill your situations, before you kill your circumstances, God is saying to take another look. Now, this is my last one. Y'all get ready. A little boy. He told his family that he wanted to play the clarinet. And when he went to the play the clarinet, he began to have a recital at his school. And at the recital, they sat there a long time. And the boy began to play. And this is why we can't focus on people tonight. Because when the boy began to play, he sat down and played for a good minute. And after a while, the crowd began to leave. Huh? And when they began to leave, huh, the little boy just kept on playing. Huh? And after a while, huh, and by and by, huh, the crowd got real small. Huh? How many know tonight ha, that people will walk out and leave you? Ha, but when you've been changed, ha, it don't even matter. Ha, people will talk about you. Ha, they'll lie on your name. Ha, they'll scandalize you. Ha, they'll criticize you. Ha, but keep on playing. Ha, so the boy, ha, he kept on playing. Ha, after a while, ha, his mama came in the room. Ha, she walked up ha, to the stage. Ha, she said, son, ha, you did real good. Ha, come on home. Ha, pack up your bags. Ha, how many know ha, that the devil ha, will have you pack up ha, your happiness? Ha, have you pack up ha, your joy? Ha, 
Have you pack up uh, your peace? Uh, have you pack up uh, your finances? Uh, have you pack up uh, your marriage? Uh, have you pack up uh, your ministry? Uh, but when it comes, uh, just keep on playing. Uh, so the boy said, uh, he put his clarinet down. Uh, he said, Mama, uh, I don't mean to be rude. Uh, I don't mean to be funny. Uh, but I'm not playing uh, for you. Uh, I know uh, that you gave me life. Uh, I know uh, that you feed me every day. Uh, but I'm just playing uh, for the man upstairs. Uh, this man uh, been good to me. Uh, this man, uh, he woke me up. Uh, early this morning ha. this man ha. he started me ha. on my way ha. this man ha. puts food ha. on my table ha. this man ha. puts clothes ha. on my back ha. so whatever you do ha. you got to keep on playing ha. don't let ha. the devil ride ha. if you let him ride ha. he'll want to drive ha. the devil might ha. just steal your car. Ha. He might just ha, try to take you down. Ha. But tell somebody ha, I've been hit, ha, but I'm still pushing. Ha. I've been slapped, ha, but I'm still going. Ha. Because I know ha, that greater ha, is he ha, that's in me ha, than he ha, that's in the world. Ha. Find you a neighbor ha, and say, neighbor, ha, oh neighbor, ha, I've been transformed. Ha. Transformation. Ha. Tell him, say, look at ha, what is done. Ha. I was a wrench ha, undone. Ha. I was living ha, in a world of sin, ha. but I found in him. Ha. I said, I found in him ha, a resting place. Ha. The old folk, ha, they had a soul. Ha. They said, when I was sinking ha, deep in sin, ha, I was far ha, from the peaceful shore, ha, very deeply ha, stained within. Ha. I was sinking ha, to rise no more. Ha. But the master, ha, I said, the master ha, of the sea, ha, he heard ha, my despairing cry. Ha. Is there anybody ha, in the room tonight ha, that's grateful ha, that he heard your cry? Ha. He didn't leave ha, you in your mess. Ha. He didn't leave ha, you on the ground. Ha. But the old folk, ha, they said, ha, if he got the rich way down, ha, he'll pick you up. Ha. He'll pick you up, ha, turn you around, ha, place your feet. Ha. Is there anybody ha, that can testify ha, that he placed your feet ha, on solid ground? Ha. He placed your feet ha, on higher ground. Ha. I don't know ha, about nobody else, ha, but I'm ready ha, to go higher. In the Lord, ha. I'm ready ha, to go deeper. Ha. In the Lord, ha. is there anybody ha, that can testify ha, that I'm forgetting ha, those things ha, which are behind me? Ha. And I'm reaching ha, for the things ha, which are before. Ha. I press, ha, I press ha, toward the mark ha, of the high calling ha, of God ha, in Christ Jesus. Ha. Way may get hard, ha, but I'm still pressing. Ha. Talk about me ha, as much as you please, ha, but I'm pressing. Ha, because I know, ha, Lord, I know ha, that better ha, is the end of a thing ha, than the beginning thereof. Ha. It's hard right now, ha, but I got to keep going. Ha. I just ha, can't give up now. Ha. I came ha, too far ha, from where I started from. Ha. Nobody told me ha, that the road ha, would be easy, ha, but I don't believe ha, that it brought me this far ha, to leave me now. Ha. I'm depending ha, on Jesus. Ha. Is there anybody ha, under the sound of my voice ha, that can testify ha, that you're depending ha, on Jesus? I'm depending on the Lord. I know that the word says I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Family can walk out, but I'm depending on Jesus. 
friends wish me did not, but I'm depending on Jesus. I want to tell you tonight that this man is good to me. Let me tell you about a transformation. One day, there was 10 lepers. They had a disease that didn't nobody want. They had something that won't no good. But they said to Jesus, if you touch me, I'll be made clean. I don't care how stained you are. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your family said. He'll wash you white as snow. He'll change your very life. But one thing I love about these folk, one of them said, Lord, I got to come back and tell you thank you. He said, Lord, you've been too good for me to walk away. He said, Lord, can testify uh, that if it had not been uh, for the Lord uh, who was on my side, uh, where uh, would I be? Uh, he said, Lord, uh, if you hadn't done it, uh, it wouldn't have been done. Uh, he came back uh, with a praise. Uh, he came back uh, with a thank you, Jesus. Uh, he came back uh, with a hallelujah. Uh, Tell somebody uh, under the sound of my voice, uh, say, neighbor, uh, oh, neighbor, uh, I'm coming back uh, with my praise. Uh, the enemy uh, tried to kill me, uh, but I'm coming back uh, with my praise. Uh, I lost my joy. Uh, I had some friends uh, to walk away. Uh, I lost my hope, uh, but I never uh, lost my praise. Uh, my praise uh, is still here. Uh, is there anybody uh, in this room uh, that can testify uh, that through it all, uh, I still got to praise uh, because I know uh, that the God I serve, uh, he's still, uh, he's still able. Uh, no matter uh, what the circumstance, uh, no matter uh, what the situation, uh, he's still uh, an able God. Uh, because the Bible said uh, when there was a man uh, by the name of David uh, and a man uh, by the name of Goliath, uh, and he said uh, he killed uh, the bear and the lion. Uh, God is saying uh, that I killed uh, sickness. Uh, I killed uh, poverty. Uh, what is a problem uh, to a big old God? Uh, I'll tell somebody, uh, say, neighbor, uh, Oh, neighbor, it's a small thing to a giant. You got to stop telling people how big your problem is. But tell somebody, I serve a big God. I got to go now. I got to leave you now. That clock on the wall says that's all. It's been fun, but I got to run. But I want to leave you. By saying these words, if you never had a problem, then how would you know that God could solve it? If you never been sick, how would you know that he's a healer? If you never been broke, how would you know that he's a provider? If you never had to cry, then how would you know that he can wipe away every one of your tears? Be not dismayed, whatever be time. God will, God will, God will, God will, God will. Is there anybody that know we will take care of you? He'll clean you up, he'll take care of you. He'll wash you, he'll take care of you. He'll take care of your family. He'll take care of your children. He'll take care of your money. Say, won't he will? Say, won't he will? Won't he will? Won't he will? You ought to praise him like you know he will. 
You ought to shout like you know he will. Whatever you've been praying for, God says sign it with a praise. God says sign it with your victory. Sign it with your hand clap. Sign it with your hallelujah. Say, I know, Lord, I know that he will. If by chance you didn't receive the word tonight, if by chance you missed God's word, if by chance you did not recognize the fruit that was in the house, The doors of the church have been open for over 200 years. Whoever you may be, that burden that you came with tonight, that word speaks for itself. See, this is the opportunity when you get to see when God's word come through God's house and then they give the mic to a preacher and then the preacher do not follow behind that. That was a word. The doors of the church is open. If there's anyone right where you're sitting, now I'm not going to call you up front. Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. If you're in the need of prayer, perhaps you want to rededicate yourself back to the Lord. Perhaps you're not sure where you are when it comes to you and your salvation with God.
Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you saying thank you for your word. For your word tonight, Father God, it was tight, but it was right. I thank you for your word tonight, Father God, that I may look inward to myself. We thank you, Father God, for that word that you have given your servant. We thank you for his obedience unto you, Father God. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we lift your holy name because you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen. amen. Give the Lord a hand, praise. I'll now turn it over to Sister Graves. Good evening, everyone. Again, I'll tell you what, that little young man, that little short man, he brought a word for us tonight. And I am so grateful. <clears throat> I am so grateful when he came up. I looked at him, you know, once the words start coming out, I go, okay, Lord. Then he started moving around. I said, okay, Lord. And then that man brought the word tonight for us. So we are so very grateful. So Ms. Bowie, could I get you to come up, please, ma'am? We weren't sure if you were going to be here tomorrow night. So we wanted to present you with this basket for you and your baby to come. And we pray that um, God bless you with a beautiful, healthy baby and that she come out anointed. I've learned from some great preachers to not 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 preachers that have mega churches, not preachers that have large homes and things, but I've learned from some great preachers that have stayed on the wall for many years that when the word is preached, you don't have to add to it. That's right. You don't have to talk about it. Just let it resonate in your heart. My Lord, my Lord. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. St. Joseph, I just have to say. I can't confirm it, but like father, like son. Appreciating the rain and the transformation. I'm just looking forward to what's coming tomorrow. Amen. 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 
Amen. Now, I don't know about you. When, when, I, when I first started here, we took the clocks out. Because the clock makes you focus on time. Last night, when they opened the doors, it was 9.30. But it seemed like it was just a few minutes. That's when you know you're preaching the word. When people don't mind staying. You can... A good deacon told me, never leave before the benediction because you're missing another blessing. Amen. So, we have some snacks in the back for you. And I don't want you to go, but. <laughs> he he could have kept preaching, but I know. I know what he means. Just like his father spoke yesterday, you can just wear a preacher out. But I know you need to go back and get rested up and get rejuvenated and come on back tomorrow. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Stand on your feet if you will. If our hearts and minds are clear. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for your goodness, your grace, and most of all, your mercy. One more day you spared us. One more opportunity that you gave us to call your name. We say thank you, Father. We pray for traveling grace as they leave this place and go home, Father. We pray you bless them to rest tonight, Father. And we pray you keep them focused on you at all times. And until we meet again, we put it all in your hands. And the church said amen. 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 Go in peace.